Go on, what are you doing today? Well, today's turned into a bit of a boat day because it's sunny outside. It's stopped raining at last. We actually started out at the front end in the anchor locker where the windlass sits on top of a great big piece of steel. It was pretty rusty from all the salt water that obviously comes in every time you bring the anchor up. So uh, we've got the windlass off. I wanted to get the big backing plate up and off so I could really work with it and clean it up properly. But uh, even though I've undone the bolts, um, it, it's sort of sycophlexed or somehow stuck to the, the base uh, inside the locker. So um, we've treated it with uh, a rust inhibitor. That's got to stay on there for six hours. Last night, a little switch that we switch on the LEDs that run along the um, starboard side of the saloon here, the switch basically broke. Um, so I've replaced it with a nice big chunky white one uh, and fixed that. So I thought while I've got the soldering iron out, one of the things that we also wanted to do was here in the galley we've got these um, little uh, touch activated LEDs and they're great but we prefer these to be in the princess suite because the LEDs and the ones in the princess suite are incandescent. So uh, because we're in the princess suite quite a lot and we're using lights I prefer them to be LEDs. So now I've taken these panels down to get access to this and um, I've, what I've found is, now this is really good, this is where the uh, LED was connected, um, but it was coming out of a hole here, but I really want it to come out of a hole over here. Why? Why? Because I've got this great big strip of LEDs mm. that's going to run all the way across the, the galley. Fabulous. Uh, I want this switch to live there. So. <laughs> One thing leads to another on the boat. The place is a complete mess at the moment because they've got lockers open, tool, tool kits out and everything. Um, but I think once this is done, it's another thing to tick off the list. So I'll see how far this, how far this stretches and see if we can get it to go all the way up to here because that will illuminate yeah. that area as well. And if I can just get that all the way back to here, to the switch, um, that will be great. Well, it's getting to that time of day, dusk has fallen, and uh, it's time to switch on the LED lights. These LED lights behind me we've had uh, installed since Spain, uh, so quite a while ago. And today we installed the LED lights in the galley area. So that's what they look like. Pretty good. And we like the way that, um, you know, now we've got a, a kind of uh, even illumination all the way across the galley space. Mm -hmm and run up into that corner as well because that was kind of like a, a dark area where evil things and bad things could hide. Mm -hmm. Now we've brought light, nothing can hide there, not even dust. Um, so <laughs> quite happy with that and an uh, easy uh, on-off switch here. Yeah. Bing! Oh, no, I can't see Bing! And it makes everything look lovely and bright and healthy and fresh, unlike me because I'm really tired. <laughs> Ooh. Stir fried veggies with chicken. Yum. This is now the day after when we were installing the LED lights down below and also working here at the front end of the boat. So let me quickly show you what we're doing here and also explain what we're going to continue doing here today. As you can plainly see, our anchor chain is no longer attached to the gypsy. Uh, the gypsy is still attached to the windlass, but the windlass is not attached to the backing plate of the windlass. Um, because basically that big backing plate there was quite rusty and so we've treated it with a, uh, a rust inhibitor and today we're going to put a couple of coats of uh, white hammerite paint on it and then we'll put it all back together once the paint's dry 
and reattach the chain and of course the anchor. Now, one of the other things we're also going to do is here at the end of our, our swivel, um, we're going to add an uh, extra six links of the uh, 10 mil chain between the end of the swivel and the shaft of the anchor because uh, this was a question I brought up a couple of months back and asked the viewers what they thought would be best. So after getting a lot of um, responses back, either on the yes, add chain, or no, don't add chain, or don't touch it if it ain't broken, um, I finally decided that, yeah, we will put the extra chain on the end. And yesterday we had to cut off the uh, old shackle because the thread of the Allen key had rounded out and so there was no purchase on it so we, we cut through that and I'm just going to go out to the marine chambers at the marina and purchase a new uh, omega shaped uh, shackle for the front end here. So a um, little bit of shopping in town for me after I put the first coat of paint on here and then we'll crack on with the rest of this stuff. So still a couple of things ongoing at the pointy end of ABC. Uh, here in the anchor locker we have got the uh, first coat of white hammerite paint on the backing plate of the windlass and I've also decided to just do the floor space uh, in the white hammerite paint as well because it was looking a bit rusty and rust stained so just to clear, clean it up and make it look nice I'm doing two coats of that on there as well. First coat's on We've got to wait until three o'clock this afternoon for the second coat to go on. Then tomorrow morning it should all be dry. I can put the windlass back on and finish painting the area underneath the windlass. And we'll also give the windlass a bit of a clean up as well. And that is that set for the summer. Job done. Uh, hello. <laughs> Just doing a bit more housework. We have been. Um cleaning these regularly, you know, just wiping off the condensation and occasionally giving them a squirt of this mix of vinegar, water and tea tree. Um, but um, around the, the locking uh, mechanisms here, um, there are places that we just haven't been able to reach. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, take these off and then I'll be able to get much better access uh, around here where the mildew is you know still growing. So to open these you just need an Allen key. And my keys in one of my pockets here. I'll clean under here as well because th there might be a bit of yeah there's a bit of mildew on there so and see it's all starting to build up under there. So Basically, all I'm going to do, and I'll just show you, I'm just going to give it a good spray. It's not rocket science. <laughs> so I'll just go around the whole boat and do all of these. So how many hatches and ports have you got to clean? Uh, just 21. Just 21? Yeah, yeah. Should, uh, should get that done before sundown? At least I'll get a bit of suntan. <laughs> all right, I'm back to work. These were really difficult to unscrew and get out. And you can see here, see how it's corroded? So I've got to give that a really good clean. Okay, well, I've got three hatches that I can't get to because they're underneath the dinghy. So, um, what I've got to do is basically unfasten the dinghy from where it is and hoist it up on the halyard using the halyard um, and that will raise it enough that I can get to it to these three and then I can do what I need to do and then I can put it back down again. <laughs> Now I can get back to cleaning. Cool. Wait for the camera. What you doing, Bess? 
I'm just uh, making this line that we secure the dinghy with just nice and neat and tidy because the ends were looking very straggly. Yeah. For those of you that don't know, um, if you just cut a line, eventually it just falls apart. So what we do here is we wrap it up with electrical tape and then once we've got a nice tight bit of electrical tape on it, we can cut the end off. That gets rid of all the straggly bits. And then, obviously wind dependent, I might just, might just be able to pull this off here. It's quite protected in here. You get a, a light uh, lighter or some sort of heat source, you burn the end of the line and it all melts and forms like a, a seal and um, that stops the line from fraying at the end. When you've managed to get enough heat on it for a long enough time, this is what it looks like. Now, the purists are going to have babies, little baby bears, bouncing out all over the place here because I am mixing my metals. I know you shouldn't do it, but you've got to deal with what you can buy in the local area. And I have scoured everywhere in cash, trying to come up with these, uh, these Omega-shaped uh, shackles. I found the only two I could in cash, and unfortunately they are stainless steel. Which at this end of the world isn't too bad, because our swivel itself is stainless steel. Great stainless steel to stainless steel. Stainless steel to galvanised chain, not good I know. Galvanised chain to stainless steel to a galvanised anchor shaft. All very, very naughty. But, what I'm going to do is, as we travel around Greece this year, I will check in and out of any ports and marinas that we can and I will go into all of the chandlers and if I can find galvanized um, omega shaped shackles I will buy them and I will replace them sometime this year and of course every time we bring the anchor up we're going to be looking this over to make sure there's no obvious corrosion happening between the two types of metal. It's now day three of this wonderful sunny weather and we're still at the front end of the boat. Um, Admittedly, a lot of that is due to the fact we've been waiting for the paint to dry. So now it's time to put the windlass back onto the backing plate. And I've just given it a quick clean up because uh, obviously throughout the year, little oil leaks come out. When you're topping up the oil, it spills over the side. You just give it a rough wipe. So I've cleaned it up thoroughly so that if anything starts leaking throughout this next uh, summer, we'll actually spot the, the leaks fairly quickly because it's a clean uh, windlass. So the hammerite on the windlass and uh, here inside the locker area is all nice and dry. It really is, uh, it feels nice and tough. Um, so I'm just going to mount the windlass on here. Um, then I, the area where the windlass has been sacked, I can put the first coat on there. And then I'll put a second coat on there this afternoon. And I might even do a third and final coat over the whole of the bottom, just because I can and I've got enough paint to do so. looks heavy Baz. It's just a little bit heavy but that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah, That was the one that was difficult to come out. Oh, there she goes. Bit of a wiggle and she's in. So did you put Loctite on that? Or no these don't need Loctite. See the little sort of like blue stuff in, inside? Oh, yeah. Um, it's actually like a, a nylon ring inside and so it, it tightens itself up and, and locks itself into place. And just as a side note here, I was having a conversation with one of our viewers who's just bought himself a new 42 or 43 foot Bavaria and he's going to be cruising the Med and he's only been supplied with 45 meters of chain so he's thinking of adding another, uh, I don't know, 55 meters of road. Now that's what we've got here, 50 meters of chain, 50 meters of road. And we'd really like to make that 100 meters of chain, but he brought up a very good point that an extra 50 meters of 10 millimeter chain is around about 137 kilos of weight. So that's a lot of weight to have at the front end of the boat. Now, the question for, for you guys is, and girls, is it okay to add another 137 kilos of so like chain to the front end of the boat? We have enough room here, this is a huge anchor locker, that the room is not an issue. Um, so yeah, room's not a problem, is weight going to be a problem? Your thoughts in the comments section down below please. On this particular windlass there's only four uh, nuts and bolts that hold it down to the backing plate. <sighs> right. 
Right, that's all the huffing and puffing done. Well, the front end of the boat is pretty much done for now, apart from cleaning and polishing, and not a moment too soon either, because out, out here to the east, there's a bloody big storm coming in. Take a look at that. We've had our three days of sunshine. It's back to the rain now. Now, there's plenty more to do, so I'd better stop talking to you and crack on with it. And by the way, if you're not yet a subscriber, pause the video now, go down there, not in the anchor locker of course, but just down there at the bottom of the video and click that subscribe button. We'd appreciate it, it really does help us out. Thanks very much. The windless housing area is lovely and spick and span. Uh, three coats of hammerite on there. And of course, uh, um, the backing plate before we put the hammerite on, we did treat with an um, anti-rusting fluid, uh, which basically just seals off the rust before painting. And the chain is back on the gypsy. Our stainless steel swivel, is uh, nice and tight here now. Shackle with uh, Loctite liquid and seizing wire. Four links of chain to reduce uh, lateral strain on the shackles. And again, shackle onto the shaft of the anchor with Loctite and seizing wire. Next week on Sailing ABC, we complete more jobs on the boat and visit the ancient temples at Latoon. Wanna get involved? Subscribe? Check out our Patreon page and leave a comment.